Our next speaker will be Professor Lee. He's with the University of Rhode Island. He's the uh, Professor of Civil and, and Environmental Engineering. This particular presentation was prepared by my professional friend, uh, Professor Imad al Qadi and then Professor Hassan Oza. Uh, they are faculty at University of, Rhode Island, not University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. TRB AHD 25 Silence and Fillers Committee because we are working together under this particular committee. The uh, research team of U of I Urban Champaign did was uh, validation of hot pod crack sealant performance based guidelines. So this is very important. Uh, some, some of you may not actually, you, you appreciate the, the importance of maintenance. Uh, when we talk about pavement preservation, it's same as the pavement management system. In other words, whatever we do is under the pavement preservation or pavement management system. As you know, the PMS starts with the planning and design including material and construction and maintenance and rehabilitation. So my job is uh, promoting how important the maintenance is to preserve our pavement system. As you can see, the state DOT, they are spending lots of money. I highlighted uh, some state in Northeastern state or region. New York DOT, they are spending $70 million per year. New Jersey DOT, I know some of you come from New Jersey. Uh, actually, I got my master from Rutgers, so I'm a little familiar with New Jersey. They are spending $60 million per year. Even the smallest state in our union, Rhode Island, they are spending $4 million per year. So when we spend the certain money, there was a need. And then we have to spend this money wisely to preserve our payment system. That's the, I think, the reason this project was created. So probably most of you know the uh, crack sealant material, but it's not a bad idea to start with the definition about uh, crack sealant material. This possess both adhesive and cohesive properties to form a seal which prevents water, liquid, and solid from penetrating into the payment system. This definition we did not create, this is uh, from the ASTM. So crack sealant is produced to keep its shape as applied and hardens through chemical and or physical processes to form a viscoelastic, rubber-like material that withstands extension or compression and weathering. So from this, this sealant material should be compatible with the asphalt binder. That's basically this uh, they're telling us, so asphalt concrete. Needless to say, we have crack like this, and then our lovely maintenance crew, they have to seal this crack, seal it. And then there are numerous number of sealant. So, which sealant we are going to use, how we are going to use effectively. That's what the purpose of this uh, study, I believe. About 10 years ago, the uh, FHWA created a full fund study. And then it started, uh, the phase one started in 2008. Uh, they completed 2008, 10 years ago. But it should be validated, uh, so, in the year 2010, they continue phase two study. 
And obviously, as I mentioned to you, U of I Urbana Champagne research team conducted this study. And then here is uh, some state which provide the full fund funding, such as uh, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and New York DOT. So we started with a major accomplishment of phase one, and then we'll talk about phase two. Uh, phase one introduced new tests to assess sealant's susceptibility for installation at various primary regions in North America. It also developed performance-based sealant selection guideline based sealant rheological properties. So I know most of you are familiar with the rheological properties because of asphalt binder. As I mentioned to you, the, uh, this started with the spirit of super pave binder specification. How many of you never heard about, heard about the super pave? Everybody heard about this. Well, now you, you will be familiar with it, okay? <laughs> As they found that the sealant material should be compatible with the asphalt binder, they utilized the concept or spirit of the super pave uh, binder specification. And then they also utilized their standard methods, procedures, based on fundamental material characteristics, which is basically rheological properties. And then make sure we can utilize existing equipment, because uh, every state DOT, they uh, uh, have problem with the securing funding. And then if we can utilize existing equipment, that's much better than purchasing new equipment. And there also saw the uh, accomplishment of phase one was the proposing uh, threshold for each test. So let's talk about the spectrum of uh, performance test. The first thing is you have to install sealant properly, and then that temperature will be about 180 degrees Celsius. When you install the sealant, what property we have to know? The first thing is low cure time for traffic opening and also easy and proper insulation. After insulation, the sealant will be performed or will be used for high temperature such as 40 to 80 degrees Celsius. And also, winter time, it will be solved at minus 20 to minus 40 degrees Celsius. And then we have to consider the characteristic at high temperature and low temperature. So for the high temperature, they consider sufficient elasticity against stone intrusion, and also they considered resistance to flow and softening. At the low temperature, they consider adhesion to maintain bonding, and same time flexibility and extendability. And then they utilize existing equipment, or they develop a couple of new equipment for sealant, actually crack sealant they call. So this is the uh, developed tests and procedures. You are familiar with, uh, I believe, if you are familiar with super pave, the first thing which you will perform, okay, that is the uh, rotational viscosity. But in this case, they call apparent viscosity. Maybe they want to distinguish between, you know, asphalt binder and then sealant. And then the, uh, for the super pave asphalt binder specification, they used the rotational, the uh, roll, uh, rolling, uh, I'm not rotating, rolling thin film oven and pressure aging vessel. But instead of uh, 
RTFO and then PAV, they develop so-called vacuum oven aging system. And then they use same TSR as asphalt binder. And also they use same uh, bending beam diameter. And also, however, they use the uh, tension test. As you know, the, uh, for the asphalt binder, we started with the direct tension test, but later we dropped, as you know. But in this case, they put back for this uh, Cylon characterization. And then they have developed two different tester, adhesion test and Bristol test. As you can find the red, line, red number, every test is already standardized in ASHTO. So you may refer all those uh, individual tests. Now, we need to have standards for Cylon grade determination. Okay? So, they, as I said already, they followed the footstep of superpave binder PG grading system. And then, as the uh, binder grading system did, they determined the grade of an unknown Cylon in other words, there are two different approaches. There is an unknown cylinder, and then you need to characterize. That's why asphalt binder did the same thing. In other words, PG grading system, they have two different approaches. One is unknown asphalt, and then if there is a known asphalt, you have to verify. So same thing here. The second approach they did was verifying grade of a known cylinder. And then all this, are standardized into two specification and practice by ASHTO. So you can refer these two uh, specification and practice for more detail. Interesting part. Probably this is the most important slide you are looking at. Okay? Some of you already say, wow, that is the, looks like a PG grading system. Yes, indeed, okay? What they did was, instead of a PG, they call SG. So what does it mean SG? As you can imagine, Cylon grade. And then, like a PG grading system, 70 is high temperature grading. Minus 16 is low temperature grading. So if you are familiar with the PG grading system, it's a piece of cake. <laughs> you can easily understand what they did. However, Cylon is not asphalt binder, so they had, they had to modify the test procedure and then grading system and stress hole, as you can see from here. Again, uh, you can find all this from Ashto publication. Uh, since uh, everybody has a limited time, so with the given 30 minutes, I will not go too much detail, but it's very much similar to a uh, PG grading system here. Okay? So at the top, that's a high temperature grading system, and then bottom, the second row will be low temperature grading system. Okay, this is the uh, kind of flow chart how you are going to determine SG, not PG, right? SG is a cylinder. The first thing which we already discussed, the installation, start with the installation. So you can, application temperature, you examine, and then if it pass, you can go next testing. If fail, it'll come back. And then uh, you can do more testing. Similarly, next thing will be you need to find out high temperature characteristic. So you perform DSR test. If you pass, you go next to step. If you fail, you come back and then decrease temperature. Similarly, for the low temperature cracking system, you will go to CSBBR. The CS stands for, any of you can guess? 
What CS is? Crack selling. Thank you very much. You you are very you know very good on this topic. Very good. So crack selling BBR, not the ASPAR uh, uh, the BBR. And then you test. If you pass, you can go next test. If you fail, you will increase temperature. So it's not that difficult to understand the flow chart because you are already familiar with the PG grading system. All right, that was a phase one. So what they did in phase two? Phase two, uh, they want to validate how the phase one provides us preliminary stress hole. That needs to be validated with the field data. That's exactly what they did. And then there are three objectives of phase two. First one is validating laboratory uh, developed test. I know they utilize, they try to utilize as much as asphalt binder testing equipment, but they develop or they modify. So they have to validate. The second objective was checking threshold validity using field performance data. And third one is implementing crack sealant guideline for field application. We have a wonderful product. If you don't know, if you cannot implement, that's useless, worthless. We are wasting money. So I think that implementation is very important. So they work hard how to implement their product. They selected, uh, there are numerous number of sealant material, okay? I think the first speaker, all state has many, <laughs> and then many companies, many different sealant, but they selected 18 of them in our union, and then they tested. And then they have, I think, uh, eight state test site, and then in northeastern North state, they have New Hampshire and New York. That's not bad, you know. One quarter was came from your state, okay? So it's, uh, they did not ignore the northeastern state. So how they evaluate distress? So I think most of you are, you know, familiar with the distress related to crack selling. Let's go over one by one. Most uh, common uh, distress with crack selling would be adhesive failure. Did you see the audition failure here, line? I hope you can see, right? And then second one will be cohesive failure okay, within a uh, cylinder. And third one will be partial depth adhesive, cohesive failure. So when you <laughs> do go out field, you need a kind of a knife or a sharp thing, so you can see it will be full or partial. The second most important uh, failure or distress is so-called overband wear. Okay? Most contractors, they are using overbanding. Okay? So we need to make sure there are no failure. The other one will be spoiling. That's another distress. The last one is stone intrusion. So we they deal with at least six different types of distresses. And then they develop kind of a, uh, index, so-called performance index, PI. And then obviously 100 is the best, and then zero is uh, hopeless. So they made some sort of uh, standard or uh, template. And then here is the uh, uh, Minnesota performance. There are as you can see, lots of different uh, the uh, ceiling, but they pointed out FB performed best and then uh, GD performed worst. Obviously, they cannot, they will not, and I cannot tell you what FB is, what GD is, because uh, you know we do not want to give any hard time to any uh, producer or contractor. So as you see here, uh, FB, 
they have this one. Very high performing as a low value and then high value and then medium value. They reported only medium value. One thing what they found is they can discriminate or they can distinguish high performance a uh, high performing the uh, craxilla, low performing craxilla, and then middle. That's very important. You know why it's important, right? This is a Michigan uh, test site. Here, section 4 and 12, they perform best, and then section 3 was worse. And this will give you a kind of a template. What does it mean good performance? What does it mean poor performance? From this picture, you can distinguish between two groups. And then they also tabulated, okay, because uh, FHWA, they won all those details. So this is a kind of a tabulation of those performance data. I will talk about individual tester. As I mentioned to you, the uh, first equipment was a rotational spectrometer. And then they determine apparent viscosity. In case any of you are not familiar with the tester, this is a good time to check. This is a new, new system. They call vacuum open aging system. Designed to simulate sealant aging during construction and service life. Specially designed the cell to allow uniform temperature profile. Bending beam rheometer which is the uh, same one, but they use different term. Instead of what they call the uh, M value, they use average creep ratio. This is a new adhesion test. Again, CS stands for Craxillon. Okay, adhesion tester. CSAT means Craxillon adhesion test. And then there is the uh, objective. Develop a standard test to measure bonding between silicon and aggregate. And then test parameter will be maximum load or bond energy. And there is a crack silicon direct tension tester, CSTT. And then here is the uh, performance threshold, which is uh, determined in the lab and then validated in the field. Final remark. A sealant performance grading system and test method have been validated with the field performance. That's very important. You know, whatever wonderful thing you produce in the lab, if that's not correlated with the field performance, what's this, okay? I think this is very important for the implementation. Test methods are consistent with the super paved system. And then most importantly, now everything in the ASTO system. Okay? And then more than 15 states are familiar with the test method with some testing experience. I hope you will you'll join if you are not within 15 states. Okay? You can join this uh, state. And then uh, you can have a better maintenance program. Okay? And then uh, precision and bias is on the way. Uh, this takes time. And then I think they, they did a uh, wonderful job, so I'm very pleased to share this information on behalf of the research team of University of Illinois Urbana Champaign and also TRB committee on Ceylon. They want to acknowledge for this study, obviously, FHWA, full fund, and then all those participating states, including New Hampshire, Rhode Island, New York, from northeastern region. And then here is some uh, hard workers in the field, in the lab, and then uh, they do not want to forget the Ceylon manufacturers. Yeah, some manufacturers did not produce good one, but they tried. 
and then they are trying to make a better one, I believe, now, if they were not categorized in good performance. Again, thank you for your attention. And then I have one uh, commercial. <laughs> at the bottom, as you can see, we are going to have the 31st Rhode Island Transportation Forum <coughs> on October 26th, which is last Friday, every year, last Friday in October, when our campus has a peak of the New England foliage. So Friday, you work with us, and then if you can find time, hopefully with your family, and then next day, Saturday, you go to Atlantic Ocean, which is uh, five minutes from my campus, and then you can catch some lobster, and then you boil, and then enjoy. Thank you again, listening to me. And then my presentation, and then if any, there are any questions, any comment, this is a good time to entertain. The hard copy of this <coughs> forum is a uh, registration desk, so you can pick up one, and then uh, you can do uh, exhibition, you can make a presentation, if not, simply like <coughs> you, sitting and enjoy. So you can do whichever the best for you. Thank you. Uh, the preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.